The following broadcast is a companion podcast for Blessed Living Woman's e-magazine and is brought to you by The Bonding Place. In this episode, your hostess Jill Bond is interviewing Penny Cook and will be discussing the article, Pennies from Heaven, Pursuing Prayer, from the Winter 2013 issue, Volume 1, Thankfulness. Check out the free e-magazine at blwemag.com. Hello and welcome back. In this episode of our podcast, I am delighted that we have Penny Cook back, and she's going to be reading um, it first from her article, Pennies from Heaven, Communing with God in Prayer is Awesome, and it's the P of Pursuing Prayer. This is a Bible study that um, Penny taught at our church, and she did such an outstanding job that I asked her to write it up as an article for all of us, and it is featured in our latest magazine, and you can look at that at blwemag.com. And now here's Penny reading her article. Communing with God in prayer is awesome. I am so grateful that he has invited us to come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need, as he told us in Hebrews 4.16. Who of us do not have needs every single day? Some people have rich prayer lives, while others find themselves forgetting to pray or just being frustrated and having trouble praying because of not knowing where to start or what to say or having unanswered prayer. Perhaps you have questions about prayer. Let's start by asking this question as stated by Corey Tenboom. Is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? The first problem of prayer is that we don't pray, or at least we don't pray enough. We especially as women are so busy tending to everyone else's needs that we often neglect ourselves and our Lord. In a Nancy Lee DeMoss conference I went to a couple of years ago, she shared that only 20% of women in the church spend daily time with the Lord. Only 20%? We wouldn't think of not charging our cell phones, forbid it that we should ever forget. Yet many times we go about our days uncharged spiritually. We wouldn't go without eating for long periods of time or we'd be malnourished. Yet we allow ourselves to become spiritually malnourished. How about our nail appointments, hair appointments, and massage appointments that we have to go to? Ouch, (laughs) that's really getting uncomfortable now, isn't it? Too many times we pray quick, get it over with prayers, and then off we go. Or we pray on the go prayers, never sitting at the feet of Jesus to listen to what he has to say about our day or our situations. It's kind of like we text our prayers to God because we really don't want to talk. We just want to say what we have to say and get on to the next thing. And then many times we feel frustrated that we haven't heard from God on a matter or we think he doesn't speak to us or answer our prayers. The problem is that we are too often Martha's instead of Mary's with too many earthly things to do that have no, nothing to do with his kingdom. Nancy Lee DeMoss also shared that the constant state of women today is, oh, big sigh, I'm so busy. Too busy to pray? If we're that busy, how can we not pray about all that we have going on? I love the quote by Ann Voskamp. In our rushing bulls in china shops, we break our own lives. Imagine the strength, comfort, wisdom, peace, and direction we could be missing. How many prayers go unanswered because they were not prayed? James 4.2 says, you do not have because you do not ask. What blessings do we miss because we did not ask? The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. James 5.16 What Christ-likeness do we and others around us miss out on because we didn't stay close to his heart? 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, And we are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. What sins go unchecked because we fail to bring them before the throne of grace? 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and purify us from all unrighteousness. What unchecked sin might be keeping our prayers from even being answered? Psalm 66, 18 says, If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. 
In Priscilla Shirod's Gideon Bible study, she asks, Does the enemy have to think twice about his schemes against your family because of your watchful presence? Are the enemy's attempts quickly thwarted because you're alert and prayerful? What power we miss when we miss time with our all-powerful God? C.S. Lewis said, God designed the human machine to run on himself. He himself is the fuel our spirits were designed to burn. We must remember that if we don't fill up our pitcher, we will have nothing to pour out to others. My son is in Bible college, and in a sermon he had to write for his class, he said, In 1 Kings 19, we see the story of Elijah who wanted a big sign. I was just like Elijah, looking for some massive sign from God, hoping that someone would take me by the hand and tell me straight to my face what I needed to hear. I looked for signs and wonders, or maybe hoping to hear it uh, from a preacher at church. Sometimes we all want a big bang. We want God to come down in the flesh and appear and say exactly what we want to hear. But I didn't need a massive sign or storm or wind. All I needed was to sit down with God the Father. I wonder if surveyed, how often would you say you pray? Daily on the run? Daily with discipline? Occasionally when needs arise? Hardly ever? Perhaps you're one of the 80%. Ephesians 1, 19 and 20 tells us that the spirit that lives in us is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. Assuming, of course, that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and his Holy Spirit does live in you. Ephesians 3.20 says he is able to do far more abundantly than all we could ask or think. So why aren't we asking? Another quote I love by Ann Voskamp is, Being in a hurry, getting to the next thing without fully entering the thing in front of me. I cannot think of a single advantage I ever gained from being in a hurry, but a thousand broken and missing things, tens of thousands lie in the wake of, of all the rushing. Through all that haste, I thought I was making up time. It turns out I was throwing it away. In a recent Bible study, I developed an acrostic for prayer to help us to get into a good discipline for prayer. In this issue, we will look at the P. The first P stands for proactive, pursuing the privilege and not procrastinating, praying on purpose with purpose. Jesus went alone to pray in Mark 1.35. Why do you think Jesus went alone to pray? Another P is to protect the time. Having a planned, specific time to pray, in addition to other times, of course. Psalm 63, 1 says, Earnestly I seek you. Other versions say, Early I seek you. Why do you think it's important to seek him early? So next is to prepare a place. Just as a planned time, we need a planned place to prepare our heart. Matthew 6.6 6 says, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. That private, secret place was not only to rid us of distractions, but so we won't try to impress or please people, because that is really only pleasing ourselves. And I read this week, that the word room in that verse uh, is from the Greek word tamayon, which means a place where treasures are stored. Isn't that neat? We go to a hidden place, a quiet place, where hidden treasures are waiting for us when we go to pray. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. So when we go to this place, we need to have three things ready for us. And that is, number one, the precious scriptures in our hand, a paper and pen for journaling, and present yourself to him and be present, body, mind, and spirit. I encourage you to set up a special place to pray and plan a specific time if you're not already. If you are, I encourage you to go to the next level of wherever you are in your prayer life. It might be a certain room, in a special chair, in your yard, even in your closet. But set it up with a chair, a table, a lamp, if necessary, maybe a candle, a vase of flowers, things that, that make you feel relaxed and good. might want to skip the candle if you're in a closet, 
but uh, especially uh, do the, the items above. Be proactive, plan and protect that time and place. Well, if you're one of the 80% who get right up and at them most days, know that you're not alone. But if you will commit the time, you will be so thankful you did because you will experience power and blessing that you won't want to miss another day. Wherever you are in your prayer life, I encourage you to go deeper. I challenge you to set aside even an hour this week to just sit at the feet of Jesus, worshiping and listening and reading his word. I bet you'll want to stay longer because the more you seek him, the more you find. Psalm 62, 5 through 8. Let all that I am wait quietly before the Lord, for my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, my rock where no enemy can reach me. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart before him, for God is our refuge. Penny, I really appreciate this Bible study you did, and I got the benefit of actually getting to attend the classes. Um, I really like the part where you're talking about finding the time, which sometimes for us busy people, that's hard to do. So I always found out I need to do that first thing in the morning. Especially if you're a mom yeah. <laughs> with little ones. And one of my favorite stories um, is Susanna Wesley, who had 10 kids. Mm. Well, actually, I think she had more like 19, but only 10 survived yeah. infants. And how she could have peace when she told her kids she would sit in her chair in the kitchen and she would flip her apron down up over her head. Mm. And then her children knew she's in prayer with the Lord, don't bother mom. Mm. And I know I had some times with my kids where they would know, and we were just talking about that, was that um, my kids would know sometimes I'm, I'm having prayer time or what something I was doing. And that unless there's a fire or substantial amount of blood, not just a little <laughs> pinprick, pin don't bother mom. Right. Uh, I even had a, fa a new family. They actually had one of the rooms in their homes soundproof. Wow. So they could go in there and pray and they could pour their heart oh. out to the Lord aloud and not right. having to be silent in their prayers. Mm. And it was a completely soundproof room that it was wow. that important wow. to them. That's awesome. I know a lot of times I'll go into the yard or I've got my, uh, we have a detached garage and we can, I can go out there mm. and plead before the Lord. Yeah. Cause I know some of the best prayers I ever had um, yeah. were literally sometimes where you just want to flat out yeah. on the Lord and just weep before the right. Lord. And you don't want to scare your kids sometimes when you're weeping that long. But, you know, sometimes it might not be that bad for them to hear you. That's right. And that's what I was thinking as you're talking about that is, is it's important for those kids to see you reading your Bible and praying. Um, don't let it be a secret thing or just when they're in bed or before they get up or whatever. I know for me, I learned to read the Bible because I watched my mom reading it. Yeah. She never uh -huh. told me to or forced me to. I just read it because I saw her reading it. And so we need to be that example. They need to see that we go to the Lord often and that we do make a specific important time. It's that important that we make a specific time and place for it. That's a great example for little ones. Yes. And, and there is a distinct difference when we're having our quiet time and then that prayer right. attitude that we have all day right. long. Right. And they need to see both. Right. Mm -hmm. What have you found works? I know you talked about having a place. Mm -hmm. What has worked in your life for you able to set yeah. a place mm -hmm. aside? Of course, it's a lot easier for me because I don't have little ones at home anymore. Uh, so I have a chair in my family room uh, with a lamp and um, and my Bible and books, and it has a little drawer in the table beside it. So I keep things in there that I, I need from time to time, highlighters, uh, journal, mm -hmm. things like that. So everything's right there, and I sit there um, in the morning and, and other times, too, and, and have my quiet time. Now, when the kids were little, it was either stayed in my bedroom or, you know, that varied over the years. Mm -hmm. But um, it's hard sometimes to get up before those kids if they're really early risers, but um, important, so important to do. Oh, I, I agree. I know some of my favorite times are when I can go out in a garden. Yeah. But I know with weather, and mm -hmm. fortunately I live here in Florida, so mm -hmm. I can go out in the yard almost every day. Right. But um, I don't know what it is about a garden for me that just um, really helps me have a, a, a effectual prayer. Right. 
but being uh, in Florida, sometimes it's just too hot to go up, mm -hmm. <laughs> up there, so sometimes I don't, but... But I have to say, some of my most effective prayers have been in traffic where you're praying, mm. Lord, please let the brakes work or, yeah. or let that car swerve the other That's direction. Right. Or, um, and sometimes all you can say is just, Jesus, help. Right. Um, when you see someone, you know, all of a sudden red lights in front mm -hmm. of you. And, and that's that attitude that of prayer that we should be in all day, mm -hmm. that constant communion with him. However, we need that time to just sit with him. Uh, I always think it, it's, it, I liken it to, uh, you know, you could go and do all kinds of fun things with your husband and, and uh, whether you go skiing or, or bowling or whatever you might want to do that you do to have fun. But if you don't have those times when you just sit together over a quiet dinner and discuss important things, mm -hmm. you know, oh, it, yes. it's like that. We need that with the Lord, too. So we need to make that special time in addition to those conversational prayers that we pray all day long. Yeah. As soon as I also saw that, because um, trying to touch on each of your P's, when you said you have to be proactive, and I love that. As soon as I said, oh, I'm going to definitely do this study, because that really, because it's not something, if you wait to, oh, before I'm going to sleep at night, um, there's always something that happens. Right. And you're but tired. Your, and you're tired. And I want to give God my best, and when I'm alert. That's right. First fruits. First fruits. <laughs> and I know some people aren't best first thing in the morning, so I understand oh, that. Oh, I'm not. There I'm were not. years <laughs> what we did is we had quiet time, and that was from 1 to 2 after lunch where mm -hmm. we had quiet time, and, and that's what we called it because right. we were more alert at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. But it's whatever works for you. Right. But you, it's, you've got to plan it. It's, mm -hmm. It can't be slip slot. Right. And it's something that's just, to me, the priority of the day. Because mm -hmm. how else can anything else fit together if That's you don't right. have, have everything That's focused right. on how God's looking at things? That's right. And how he's leading yeah. you. And, and this is in addition you. to Bible studies. There is some of that aspect in your quiet time, but some of it it's just time to actually right. um, meditate on a scripture, mm -hmm. reading one over and over again. That's what's exciting mm -hmm. to me because there's some verses that I've memorized, and yet I'll read it one day. And it'll have a new that's application right. because there's something else going on in my life. That's right. And that's the listening part of prayer. That's so important that unless we do take the time in that time and place to listen, we don't hear what God has to say through Scripture or just through His still small voice of His Holy Spirit. And how you said, taking the time, um, prepare the time, mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, protect it. I love that you chose protect the time mm -hmm. because it, it is because the enemy wants to steal it <laughs> oh, yeah. I like in the screw tape letters it's like someone's starting yeah. to have a breakthrough with the Lord and then they start saying oh your stomach's growling or mm -hmm. isn't it time for lunch or those little interruptions that's and you right. really do you have to protect it and cherish it like it's mm -hmm. something special that's right because all the things that we have going on um, and I'm sure anyone that's listening to this they have they could talk for an hour about all the things that's going on in their lives mm -hmm. And without that protection at that time with the Lord, I don't know how people can read the news yeah. or hear the things oh, that are going on yeah. without Changes having Jesus. Perspective. Yeah. So I really appreciated this Bible study, and I'm really looking forward to Today we covered the first P in prayer, and then in a future um, podcast we'll be covering her R, and then those are the two that she had in this fall edition of Blessed Living Women's E-Magazine. And then we're looking forward to, because then she's going to do the other letters, the A and the Y, mm -hmm. and then the E and the R. Right. And so um, it's going to be um, really good. All to get you in a good habit of prayer. Prayer. Um, one thing that you mentioned, I remember when my kids were young, my husband could make all the noise in the morning. No, he's, he's very considerate, but leaving. The kids would sleep right through it but I could make the slightest noise putting my feet into my slippers and starting to just <laughs> walk towards the kitchen. And then, oh, mom's up! Yep. So what I learned to do, because as much as I wanted to have quiet time before they woke up, was just, okay, you guys can crawl in bed with me, and sometimes they'd Great. go back to sleep, but then they would um, have to, but then they would just see me praying. That's and then right. that's, you got to realize, that's a good thing. That's right. Make them part of it, you yeah. know? Because if we all waited till we had those perfect moments mm -hmm. where we had this wonderful room that's nothing but for prayer and with right. wonderful posters or paintings on the wall then a lot of us would never get a chance to pray right and i think that's probably what happens is a lot of young moms don't get those times mm -hmm. because it happens 
you know, one day you might have a great time uh, just alone with the Lord, and another day your kids are joining you, and that's okay, right. and that's a good thing. And it might be at your dining room table where you can lay your mm -hmm. Bible out with your journal. Um, it could be, you know, in a chair, but everyone has some spot where you can make it in right. your home, and then that's ready, ready, ready to for go. when you find a moment and you can sit right down and everything's there. Right, right. And it's so important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Penny, would you feel comfortable um, in offering a prayer now for Absolutely. those that are listening? Absolutely. Father God, we just come to you. Lord, we love you and we don't mean to get too busy. Lord, would you help us? Help us to find that perfect time and place, Lord, and be committed to it. Be proactive about it. Father, I pray that you would speak to us, that we would hear you, Father God, that we would take the time to hear you. Lord, help us. This has been the Blessed Living Woman's e-magazine podcast. Go to blwemag.com to learn more about our upcoming editions and broadcasts.